Well, thank you everyone for coming out this evening. We have a fantastic group, it looks like, um, for the Sutter, Sutter Bay Hospital Residency Program. We are super fortunate to um, have this connection and have this collaboration with Dr. Matecki and Dr. Osler at Sutter Bay. Um, prior to this, we were at, oh my gosh, in Oakland. <laughs> I Island. Uh, Highland Hospital, thank you so much, Debbie. Highland Hospital, and it was one of um, one of our most exciting programs, and a lot of students got a lot of really great information and opportunities out of it. Um, and since we are now bringing it back after the pandemic slowed everyone down, um, Dr. Matecki and Dr. Debbie thought that having this informational session would be really great um, as a space to come together, um, ask our questions, because as you know, as we all ask our questions, it brings up other questions that other people have. Um, so how this is going to look is um, Dr. Matecki and Dr. Osler are going to do a short presentation, about 20 minutes, um, to give you an overview and an experience feeling of what it would be like to be there. Um, and then we'll open it up for questions. And I had told, asked Dr. Chang to do this and then I jumped in, so I'm sorry. Um, so after, I'm gonna be more on the back end watching the mutes and all those fun things you see behind the scenes. But once we pivot over to questions, if you'll just raise your hand, not your actual hand, we could do that too. But if you go down on the bar below, you'll see um, a thing called raise hand. Just hit that button and it'll put your paw up and Dr. Debbie or myself will call on you in the order it comes. I will try to keep track of the order of the questions and put you guys in the chat box so you know when your question's coming up. We do want to try to honor all the questions that come up. Um, if you're a little shy, some people are like, oh, I don't want to speak. Pop that question right in the chat and either Debbie or myself will answer it. One thing we will ask is that when you go ask your question that you'll just turn your camera on at that point because Dr. Matecki and Dr. Osler and Dr. Lowe would much rather talk to your lovely faces than to your pictures. Although if you have a dog, well, I changed my yard, I used to have my dog, which was so cute. Um, that was fun. If you have any problems, shoot a note in the chat box to myself or Dr. Chang, Dr. Debbie, and we can try to help that. Um, and as a reminder, we are bilingual, so feel free to ask your question in Chinese or write it in Chinese, and Dr. Debbie can assist with that. Um, before we get started, because it's going to be super informationally filled, um, do you have any questions for Debbie or myself about logistics? Um, and I am going to be constantly muting people, so if you get muted, don't be offended. You can unmute for questions. Any questions for Debbie and I before we start? All right. Well, then is um, I'm gonna let Dr. Debbie go ahead and introduce the two speakers. So we are so honored, as uh, Dr. Seller is saying, that uh, we're so honored to have Dr. Mataki and Dr. Osler to come to talk to us. So um, their agenda will be the first uh, twenty minutes will be a presentation. You can see the nice, uh, very nice uh, presentation slides here. So um, Dr. Mataki is going to present, and then after all, will be a Q&A section. And uh, you can see um, that uh, Dr. Osler, uh, she's PhD and uh, executive director uh, in the International Center for Integrative Medicine, and Dr. Mataki, we all know her. <laughs> um, so she's a, a medical director, Center for uh, Integrative Medicine, elevates uh, Summit Comprehensive Cancer Center, and also we have Dr. Lowe here. Uh, we all know Dr. Candace Lowe. She, uh, she graduated from law school, so we all know her. And I actually know her in person a little bit more because <laughs> we were in the same class before. <laughs> so we were classmates back then. So it's so nice to have her to see her today, even though it's that, uh, she cannot uh, go on video, but then it's, uh, it's, it's very happy. And we are so honored to have you guys to talk to us. Uh, so. I don't want to waste uh, too much time. Uh, so now I want to let uh, Dr. Mataki to start the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chang, and thank you, Dr. Soders. Um, so Dr. Osler, uh, if you like, feel free to start to say a few words and uh, from ICIM, um, thank you. Okay. Uh, hello and ni hao, and that's about all the further my Mandarin goes, but I'll try that one. <laughs> uh, we're very excited to be here with you tonight to share with you this very innovative and creative opportunity to add to your 
portfolio as students at Five Branches University. I'm sure you've heard the history of the TCM residency. It's the first of its kind in which Eastern and Western medicine is truly blended at the educational level. So the opportunity for the traditional Chinese medicine practitioners to work and learn side by side with allopathic or Western medicine. And uh, one might say, well, just think of all the Western medicine you can learn. But I happen to know because I've been involved with the program since it was a spark in the eye of Dr. Mateki, that the learning goes both ways. And it's really an amazing opportunity to help us mainstream and bring traditional Chinese medicine alive in the inpatient setting as well as other allopathic settings, as well as helping the TCM practitioner be able to function effectively in the Western conventional allopathic hospitals. So uh, you're about to take a great ride as Dr. Mateki tells you uh, the outline of the program and afterwards we'll be more than happy. There's no dumb question, believe me. If you have it, others do too. So we'll look forward to your questions. Uh, Dr. Mateki. Thank you very much, Dr. Osler. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. So, you know, I want to just start to give a little bit uh, history background. So I want to make it a very candid and a very easy um, for everyone to walk. Um, this is a five years journey since 2016, we started the program. Uh, very innovative at the time, the concept we want the Chinese medicine practitioner uh, to be more accepted in the mainstream. Uh, so the only way we thought of the best way is to work together, um, study together, get to this traditional care house in the hospitals, the Western system worked as a multidisciplinary teams. And also clinical part, what is really is you going to be the one uh, work with your faculty, learning from faculty, how you provide your expertise as a consultant, you know, to help with Western medicine. And this is a very different, but this is what we do in China as a Chinese medicine consultant, uh, as a specialty um, uh, for uh, work and uh, support uh, the other uh, Western medicine specialties. So uh, other uh, important aspect for this training is that you are all going to participate with a research project. Uh, there is a small, there is a big, as it depends how you like. Uh, I've a graduate, really appreciated this experience. So I want to just walk you guys through this journey. Uh, so here, this is where is one of the campus uh, uh, here in Auckland, this is the summit campus. Um, and also I think there's a video uh, program to talk about the Center for Integrative Medicine, uh, where our program is. If you guys uh, you know, have a time, you can look. But then there is other campuses so over here. You can see this building is like a 10 floors. Um, it's a multi-specialties, uh, all the hospital patients, the post-op patients. On the second, third, fourth floor, there is a rehab floors. So we got a cause almost every day. We have a multiple um, referral for consultation. There are stroke patients, post-op patients, um, and also on the seventh floor is the oncology floor, post-op patients, cardiology, uh, cardiac surgery patients. Uh, so many of the patients, in patients in this major, uh, major uh, main building and also in emergency room is here. But also in the, you can see the name Alta Bates Summit. So this is the summit campus. And then there's the Alta Bates campus, there's Herrick campus, which is oncology is a primary. So you will definitely be busy, um, but I wanna just give you a little history as Dr. Soders and Dr. Osler already mentioned. So this program actually initially started in the Highland Hospital, the first the public hospital. Um, this is the first day um, we had uh, six uh, students actually from Five Branches University. And then also we have the uh, faculties. Uh, this is a Dr. Luo. 
Um, so glad to see her as uh, one of the five branches graduate, and she is assistant uh, for our uh, assist assistant program director for our program. Um, okay, and uh, you know Highland actually throughout the years very proud. Uh, to have this program. Also, they have, um, you know, uh, consulate from China come to visit, California board, uh, acupuncture board at that time come to visit, visit us. This is a Dr. Fan. Many of you uh, know him. He is uh, one, of, one of our founder uh, for this uh, residency program um, uh, stationed in the Highland Hospital clinical inpatient and also outpatients. And many of the familiar faces, you all may know it. So uh, I show you all this picture because I want you to know this program, what has changed on the higher level. So we had, this is uh, the Senator Hill, and also we have a BMP chair at that time as Evan Law from Assembly side also is the chair. So state level, they all came to visit our program in the different time. And also this is the consulate from China who is in charge of the Chinese medicine program. Uh, this program um, started in the hospital, draw a lot of attention, brought acupuncture to the mainstream. Um, few years pass and Medicare started to cover acupuncture. Uh, in addition, Medi-Cal from next year actually is going to really uh, have a very good rate. Uh, but I'm not to say it's us the only one. There's a lot of professions, uh, associations. We all work on it. Uh, but I must say when we were come to the legislature, uh, one of the reasons they said acupuncture is in the hospital now we must start to compensate and pay um, the practitioner. Uh, so this is where how this is education has been changed. We are so, fort so fortunate and so blessed that you have uh, the legendary, you know, uh, Mr. Zideman and Dr. Zhao, who uh, I know for um, quite some time, uh, one of the reason is because of my husband is a graduate as a DOM student. So that's how all the connections started. And many years ago, we talk about this. Oh, one day we will bring acupuncture to the hospital. So you can see, you know, as we dream, there is, you know, chance to become a uh, true. And this is a word um, you can see all your five branches students and also Dr. Tu, Angela Tu is here too. I just so uh, you can see the sparkling in everyone's face is just a wonderful experience how we started. Um, now come to really the bigger part. This is the two years is we have a fun, we enjoy, but also as a faculty, our team is really want to do the best to really help you, guide you. So you are going to work. You can see, you know, go through this, you will have a pretest. Um, we're not going to scare you, but primarily just wanted to know where your you know, basic information, most of this is connected with a hospital information. I think Dr. Law, if you have a question yet, Dr. Law is the one primarily in charge of you know, this portion also. And then um, we uh, really required all our uh, students uh, coming for training, they will start to practice their presentation skills. Uh, because you're going to communicate with uh, the Western uh, practitioners. Uh, so we want you to learn how you can translate the Chinese medicine language to, you know, the Western practitioner. And uh, also <clears throat> there is a post the test and a post the presentation. So you can see this, how we going to talk about a Chinese medicine and uh, there is a one well, of the rules in uh, our program. We say you cannot uh, talk to the Western physicians, uh, yin and uh, yang, uh, too often. If you're going to see those words, you must uh, have some kind of the backup 
evidence-based information to communicate with them because you're going to lose them very quickly. Um, so uh, this is the process, what you know, you're going to learn. There's a lot. There is you know, didactic section, but also there's many hands-on sections. Uh, we do have a morning report, you know, and also we have a known conference as a grand rounds. And uh, sometimes if you don't have it, have a faculty step in, do the teaching. And uh, all those conferences currently, the known conference actually still is on Zoom. Same thing as a grand rounds <clears throat> is a Zoom and a monthly journal club conferences is a Zoom also. Then there's an inpatient consultation. Uh, here you can see um, before you get your final certificate, uh, you always will do a presentation uh, for your, uh, before you graduate each term. And also there is a research articles we required for you to read and also digest the summary. Um, weekly. And this is where um, in Highland, we have a physicians, a faculties sitting in to listen to our students give the lectures. Uh, so I will say, um, you, you can see a physician started really accepted uh, the Chinese medicine once they start to see the change in their patients, the result from their patients um, they become a big um, support for us. Um, <clears throat> so there are many specialties, subspecialty is provided for your learning. And also we will you know, help individualize if you say, hey, I'm more interested than in the OBGYN department. And at the end of, you know, we will help you to arrange. But the beginning, the first year, uh, there are, uh, we have a standardized required um, uh, rotations. Um, and this is our team, uh, all the faculties, uh, some of the faculty, uh, maybe they not be on the campus, but they will do the distance learning, uh, distance teaching. I can see Dr. Law here, this is in the clinic. And uh, this is the two uh, faculty actually, one of uh, Dr. Randall still uh, uh, provide uh, the care for the sports, you know, the stars, um, the warriors as well, their bigger client. Uh, so some of the patient, uh, some of the students, if you want a specialty, uh, you can certainly um, uh, choose and work with uh, different faculties. And this is in the emergency room. This is one of our two graduates. Um, and uh, also the graduate uh, will present their research um, uh, project uh, to national, international conference. And uh, this is especially the second year uh, we really would like uh, for you to take on to learn and also uh, present, participate in the research. Uh, actually, this is one of your graduate and she, he got a, um, hired as being one of the large healthcare system around the South Bay because his experience with the research. So now I just want to quickly go through. So what is your day looks like in, when you are in the hospital on the Thursdays? So you start at eight o'clock in the morning. That's where your morning report conference. And then also from nine to 12, uh, that's where you go into different rotations. Uh, some of them maybe go to the rehab, which you have a stroke patients, the neurology patients, post-op patients, and some of the maybe go to the emergency room, oncology. So you go to the different rotation. And around the noon time, this is a grand rounds on Thursday or conference, this is the by Zoom. Uh, and also that's your lunch time. And then from uh, one o'clock to uh, uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, this time depends if there's more, uh, there's more consultation you will provide uh, for treatment. And also this is where the documentation, uh, the teaching part, how to um, uh, work on the uh, EMR, different type, you know, the EMR, most of, Right now, currently, we use as an epic. 
uh, this is uh, has been very helpful for the graduate when they uh, finish the program. Uh, they go to the different uh, health uh, centers, all hospitals that they can right away jump in because of the program they are familiar with. And also outside of the uh, one day, uh, also you have, um, you know, opportunity to join in uh, Breast Cancer Tumor Board on Wednesday uh, noon time by Zoom. And then also there is that uh, you work with your faculties, mentor, uh, preceptors uh, for articles, review, and also uh, any questions your preceptor uh, may help you. So this is where our goal is when you graduate, we want you equipped and really know how to provide the counsel clinically. Uh, you feel very comfortable, nose labs, diagnostics, and also red flag syndromes. Uh, you will pick it up um, academically if you want to be involved in the teaching. One of our graduate, actually, Dr. Phelps, uh, he's currently in the UC Irvine system. Is the lead acupuncturist there and help teaching, but also manage the program, and also you know research if you're comfortable. Because with what we are doing with the uh, Chinese medicine, not only just you can fix help the patients, but a lot uh, you know for the data collection, how you can help um, analyze. Uh, bring, you know, write the articles. So this is the way you can change how the Western medicine um, would think or practice. Uh, I think over here, you can see Dr. Phelps is over here on the side. Um, this is in UC Irvine system. They have a quite a few acupuncturists there. So through this training, mostly important, you will see uh, with the patients, you know, how we say is a patient-centered care, how do we provide it all the multidisciplinary disciplinary team to work together in the hospital is one of the skills. It's very different than used to the Chinese medicine. You know, we practice on our own. Um, this is one, uh, one skill that you will appreciate when you finish the program. Here, I want to show you, this is where the Center for Integrating Medicine, which is your home base. Uh, when you start the residency program, you will come over there um, to our office. And this is all the staff, of faculties. Um, we do wear masks and just want to let you know since COVID and at the hospital, we still require the staff um, uh, doctors, nurses, we still wear the mask. You can see the one not wear a mask is prior to COVID. So I just wanted to see this is our team and this is a Dr. Fen and, uh, you know, some of the Dr. Ma, where is the Dr. Law? Where did you hide somewhere? Um, this is a, uh, of administrative support and, um, and Dr. Ju is here. Um, this is one of a graduate, um, Dr. Bartlett, Heidi Bartlett, and this is a Dr. Phelp. So I think this is a, my last slide, and uh, I will stop here. So Dr. Law and Dr. Osler, if you have any, uh, you have any want to um, uh, add it, please feel free. So I'm going to stop the share here. So just want all of you can see each other better. Thank you for your attention. And now we open for questions. If anyone has any questions, just pop that uh, raised hand open and I will call on you. Um, I did just put up something in the chat. Debbie's chat button is not working today. So if you want a direct message, Dr. Chang, um, either send it to me and I'll pass it over to her via IM, or you can go ahead and just send her a quick email. And I will, if you do write in Chinese in the chat box, I will get it over to her to ask the questions as well. So go ahead and let's raise hands for any great questions you guys have. First up is Gideon. 
Our Dr. Shigru. Hi, Amy. Nice to see you. Hi. Um, I never saw you in person. So nice to meet you in person. I talked to you before. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask a couple questions. Number one is vaccination required for all the people who go in the hospital and are participating as healthcare uh, providers. So this is the part I think there's, a, okay, Dr. Luo, go ahead, yes. Yeah, I think um, from what we know, just like any other employees of the healthcare system or um, you know, anyone who's affiliated, there is a process where you can apply for exemption um, for medical or religious reasons. Um, and so there is a process to you know, follow through and we need to wait for the, the decision made by the you know, people who are from that committee. So there is a process for students as well. Can I ask another question? Yes. Okay. Um, are the people who are participating in the program, like the DAOM uh, providers, are they act, are they providing acupuncture and herbal treatment to the patients in the hospital? Yes. So I will. Add, oh, Dr. Luo, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And then so. Um, um, routinely, there's also a process as well. We just like how we do our internship at the school. Um, so the first term, it's all observation. And then um, after the first term, if you're licensed, and then there is a process um, with your on-site mentor, um, preceptor, and then we'll, so you do have the opportunity to do hands-on treatment. But exclusively for the first term is observ observation only. So one of the reason why the first term, uh, we decide let um, everyone start to observe, it just uh, is uh, so many information to absorb in the hospital. Uh, we have to find out it's very scattered. This is not just for Chinese medicine uh, students, also for you know Western physician. Because in the beginning, the differences for interns, resident in the hospital, we are in there six days a week. So you know, for Chinese medicine, you know, here we provide is only one day a week. So once you get familiar, you know, finally you find your way around on that day. And then a week later, you come back and you start all over again. So that's where the first term, we are very cautious and careful. We decide, you know, let's just get everyone familiar. Uh, and also, I think as students, they wanted it too, because the safety is one of the major uh, important con um, uh, concept and here. So that's where uh, we require that way. Very good questions. My last question may be a little bit direct, but I'm going to ask it anyways. The fee, I saw that there are fees uh, for the people who are participating in the program. Who, where are the fees going to? To the hospital or to uh, any anyone in particular that it's paying for? So I understand that. Maybe the other people. So you mean the fees, where is it go to? Is it Dr. Osler, you want to answer that? Or is yeah, that... I was just getting ready to. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. The program is, is sponsored, Gideon, by ICIM. So the fees are used uh, primarily to support the faculty that are teaching uh, <clears throat> the TCM residents. There are some other fees obviously associated uh, with it that ICIM incurs as a, as a result of doing the program but uh, the bulk of it goes to help support the faculty and administrative costs of doing the program. Um, thank you. And as Robin alluded to, I just had some other frame of reference for doing residency in a hospital. So I just, I, I understand that unfortunately this one is not government funded like Western medicine residency programs. So that's why there's a necessary to get some outside funding sources. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Right, we want to work toward that though, because we like the idea of making it replicate the uh, Western medicine model in the same way, but we're not there yet. That's it. Thank you so much for being so gracious. Oh, good questions. Thank you, Gideon. They were fantastic questions. And I am quite sure a number of people had those same questions. So thank you. Thank you for breaking the ice. Um, any other questions? This is a fantastic time to, um, you've got Dr. Matecki and Dr. Austin and Dr. Lowe here. Oh, and we've got Lillian Ma, or were you just hi. saying? <laughs> okay, turn it over to you. Yeah, hi, I do have some questions. I'm currently the um, in a PhD program in um, five branches. Um, so I do have my acupuncture license. So I just, I just to my understanding, this residency is for um, who is still studying the master degree or or the someone like me can join too. Um, maybe I'll say the first part first. Um, ideally, it's for um, people who are licensed, who have a goal to practice integrative medicine um, after the two years of residency program. Um, in the at, at different phases of the residency program, there have been times where we had observers or maybe like in interns or, or very short term observations from the master degree program. However, all those were the last year students, either third or fourth year students who are getting ready to obtain their license. So sometimes there is a little bit of the gap um, from when they started the program and when they actually obtained their license. Um, and I think at, there was a point in time for the AOM program to also have. We also have students. Dr. Lowe, you're breaking up a license little bit as well. for us. Yeah, I thought you were just me. Yeah, you're, you're breaking up just a little Yeah, I can't, I can't really hear really clearly. I was like, is that my, my <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Can you hear better now? Yes. It's better now. Yes. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. so the goal is for, um, so for our residency program, the second year, we do require licensure. Um, so we understand that there might be times when the, stu uh, the, the student or um, intern started our program who have not been licensed, but they're working towards their licensure. But the goal is really to, um, to train staff who are licensed. Um, what is the basic requirement, for example, like for the pre-tax? What is the pre-tax covered? You mean the pre-test? Yeah, if, if, yeah, I just curious about like the procedure, people who got in get, get a pre-tax. Like what is a pre-tax cover basically? Oh. Well, I did briefly mention, I think a pretest, the most we want to know how much information, you know, like a HIPAA. Uh, so mm -hmm. the rules like uh, safety is for in the hospital. So we just want a basic information. We, we're not going to, you know, test a lot like medical information. A lot is uh, tailored with the hospitals. I so I, I know is one of them, uh, well, not a one. It's only like a 10 questions, uh, you know, uh, majority of them is like safety, you know, HIPAA questions. Uh, so Dr. Luo, and I see Dr. Ju is also on it. And I thank you. I have a wonderful um, team, uh, faculty, very dedicated. So, um, so the goal is uh, not uh, to make you guys um, embarrassed or feel bad you don't know. But the most is for us as a faculty, we want to see, uh, you know, the basic knowledge information. Uh, how we did this, we all learning when we in the beginning, the first term, we, you know, as, as a matter of fact, the first term, a lot of the Western physicians, they didn't think, you know, our Chinese medicine doctor can speak English. So what, you know, the question from one of the senior uh, pulmonologist and the doctor say, 
uh, do they speak English? And I remember it was a, such an insult questions for me. So I literally, I went to Dr. Zhao and uh, <laughs> Mr. Zeidemann, I said, I don't care what you gave to me. I said, I want everyone speak fluent English. So you can <laughs> see the first the picture there, right? So anyway, mm -hmm. I introduced, I still literally remember that day when I introduced the, you know, the students to the Western doctor. So hear me right. This is how far away you think about 2016, okay? For pulmonologists working in Highland Hospital for 40 years, thinking about the Chinese medicine doctor don't speak English, all right? Mm -hmm. So I was introduced him. And I still remember, I wish I have a camera, all right? So, and his face is just like a shock. And I said, here you are. This is all your Chinese medicine practitioner and the students. And I can just see the shock on his face. So, you know, this is where we slowly, we kind of find out, okay, where we need, you know, fitting in to help of a practitioner. So because you've never been in the hospital, right? I want to give you another example. Dr. Ma is not here, the faculty and the Dr. Feng know that. Even for the faculties in the beginning, you know, we tell the students when you walk in the room, the patient's room, you never just walk in. You always read what is on the door, right? Because there's a different sign on the doors. Some of the doors are isolation, you know, with the COVID and now people have a more, uh, you know, the doctor staff, they have a more uh, pay attention, but uh, some of them is because of the infection, you know, staff or is, you know, and also C. difficultitis, you know, those bacteria infection. So those are the basic information you know, our staff get yelled by the nurses, you know, so there's a lot of learning curve. It's a little embarrassing, but we went through this. So as a physician, the three years internship residency, we get yelled is like a 10, 100 times every day by everyone in the hospital. So <laughs> You're not going to go through that because of the rules are changed, you know. So I'm just to tell you, um, it, it is very interesting. This is why our graduate is very appreciated of this experience. You know, we don't offer the short term anymore. Why is the reason two years? Because hospital required. So you must have a minimal two years. So that's where we don't do the short term because you kind of like. You know, it's not a really benefit you for the long term. And currently, many hospitals, uh, many big centers, they all start a higher acupuncturist. You guys probably already say it. Yeah, all over. But, uh, you know, we are here want to develop the program as a specialty. And, um, you know, so you will provide uh, herbs, acupuncture, and also safely uh, to use the four patients uh, who are receiving uh, Western medicine treatment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and Billy and I would just clarify in case you were thinking, this is mm -hmm. done after you've already been accepted into the program. So it's really a baseline assessment for the faculty rather than something you're going to pass or fail and you can't really study for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. I heard you as a very eager PhD student there. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to prepare a little bit if I really Yeah, I don't I don't blame in. you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me, Charlene. Um, I think this is more like a learning assessment for the program as well. So before you start the semester where you are at, and at the end of that, where how much you have learned. So it's a more, more of a progressive evaluation to see your learning um, progress as well. Yeah. Not just about you, but us as well. Yes. Other questions? Other questions? <clears throat> No other questions. Okay, I'll ask a question. <laughs> I will not be shy. 
what is is there a particular exit after two years you have a particular goal that there's a set of skills that the people who participate in this rotation are going to be leaving with and then is there also any help with potential job placement i know those are very difficult questions i'm going to say that up front but i'm not shy so i'll just ask no i think they're good questions gideon um and I'll, I'll speak, but I'm sure Candace and uh, Dr. Zhu also could speak very handily to this. The curriculum is competency-based, so it outlines the various uh, curriculum skills, knowledge, and attitude um, that we expect to develop in the students in the program. And in terms of postgraduate, what I would say is that we probably get many more requests than we can fill for people who are interested in those graduates. And I think particularly with the success of people like the two that are at UC Irvine, um, you know, they, they've had an integrative medicine program in that campus for quite some time, but they don't produce integrative practitioners. <laughs> so they are looking for people that have something of substance. And uh, to our knowledge at this time, uh, the ICIM program is the only one that has successfully done that. So I can thank you, Dr. Osler. I can add some. So when I work with the Sutter uh, about this, uh, you know, TCM residency program, so the an administrator right away they jumped in. They said, "Can they work?" at a Sutter in the future. So I was like, oh, of course, you just needed to pay them well, they will stay with you. So this is where the part, you know, I, uh, we do know, you know, I'm a graduate in UC Irvine. I think some of you, you guys can look at their uh, salaries uh, on their website. Uh, so definitely it's worth, your investment, you know, sounds a little bit kind of like uh, in two years you invested the income. Actually, when you graduate, uh, I believe it's like if you're working 40%, you already get your pay, your investment back. Uh, has been, uh, we were very happy and uh, to see our graduate uh, make that kind of income. So that's all I can say. So Ginia, you have a lot of wonderful questions. Let's connect. And I know we did a talk over the phone a couple of years ago, but let's connect. We can certainly, um, you know, uh, work together uh, to help our Chinese medicine community. Anyone else? Any other questions? Dr. Debbie, any thoughts? Uh, oh, you, you, Sunny, you, 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 you. Yeah, you and Sunny. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Yunsan. Hi. Yeah. yeah, hi. And thanks for your wonderful presentation. <laughs> and I have a couple of questions. So first one is, um, the program have openings every trimester. Is the Dr. Lo still here? Uh, I she said that she is going to be mailed from now on. So I see. So I can answer that question. So so far, I think we have a January and a September. Uh, so we were because it's a every. Uh, it's like a two years of program and we were working on, you know, we try to make it like a once a year um, for enrollment. Uh, but uh, because this is a fairly new over here at Southern Health, uh, so we were planning and we only have a 12 spots. Uh, so we are not like as many as we can. Uh, so we only have a 12 uh, position available. 
Um, so you mean that um, there will be 12 spots per every January and September, I mean? Uh, we, uh, that's in the beginning, you know, so we have to see how the faculty, so maybe we just become a once a year, you know, only in January, we have a new enrollment. We just have to see uh, how uh, the program, because right now there's a lot of interest, a lot of request. Uh, so this is where we may just do it, um, you know, this September, um, depends on the faculty, um, the ability, because we want, you know, how we can uh, work it out with the rotations. You can see there's uh, uh, many of the rotations available, but we have a faculty. So what you will have almost um, every rotation, every specialty, uh, you will have a faculty with you. Um, for consultation for treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And sure. um, one more question. So um, the schedule will be only on Wednesday and Thursday? Yes. Only Thursday. So the mm -hmm. Wednesday is a noon, is a optional, is like a, the, that's the breast the tumor board. Uh, so when you are enrolled at the students, we have a different lectures. You know, sometimes they have a psychiatry, they have an OB. So we can like offer to you for different. So Wednesday, the tumor board was always very um, uh, desired for our graduates uh, in the past. So this is offered, uh, you know, for you, but it's uh, on the Zoom on Wednesday. Uh, so being the students, um, enroll the students. So you have uh, not just that one day, so you have other advantage uh, for the lectures was provided by the hospital. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. No one else has a question? So, and just as a reminder that this program is also open to alumni. And so say, um, I don't know where some people are at. So I'm gonna pick on Gideon because I know where he's at in the program. He's like, wait, stop. But say Gideon applies and is accepted and he's only got one term left. He can actually roll that over into his next two years as alumni status. And so don't be afraid that as you're approaching or thinking what your educational <clears throat> experiences are going to be, that where you're at in our program might, you know, keep you, preclude you from being able to complete this program. And for some people, it may make sense to say, hey, I'm going to start this my last two terms or my last three terms because I'll get my capstone out of the way and then I can just focus on that experience as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can craft this to create the best experience for you. All right, any other questions, guys? He'll have a wealth of information right here. Use it. So I want to add it. So Dr. Osler, you remember there's a one of the graduate mentioning about you know, the cardiology rotation um, we did. Yes. We mentioned that. Yeah, the testimony while the graduate. Yes, we recently completed a survey with the uh, 36 people that had been rotated through this program. And one of the most heartwarming ones, I think, for the faculty was a, an acupuncturist who, as a five branches student, had completed the program and gone into private practice. And one day she had a patient come in and he said, oh, you know, I'm having this discomfort in my chest. And she thought that it was potentially GI. She didn't see much there, but she left him with the needles in and went into her back room because something was bugging her. And she said when she went into her office and started thinking about it, she recalled the lectures on cardiology and the red flags and different ways to look at symptomatology. 
And she came back out and she said to him, I want you to go now uh, to have a cardiac workup. And she knew that he would probably procrastinate. So she said, I was, I'm never like this with my patients, but I was absolutely firm with him. You must go and you must go right away. And so he immediately left her office and went and was admitted and had, I can't remember if he had a bypass or stents, but he had a quite uh, complex cardiac issue that he could have died from. And because of her experience with the program, uh, she felt like she had truly saved his life. And she felt quite honored that she was able to bring that kind of knowledge to the care of her patients. Thank you, Dr. Osler. Yeah, this is where the part when through this training, yeah, we were really moved when we received this feedback, you know, from our graduate. Uh, because at the time when we're doing the teaching, Dr. Luo, Dr. Zhu all here, uh, we want to, you know, sometimes really beat up students, you know, beat to their head. It's like, watch the red flag syndrome, watch the red flag syndrome. Everybody, you know, thinking, okay, it's not going to happen. When we read this, I myself, actually, I take a deep breath. I started thinking, you know what, in the future, I I must have to be constantly believe and on guard, you know, to help, uh, you know, other students to really raise them uh, guard because sometimes I have patients coming in for back pain with stage four bone cancer. So it was treated, you know, by different specialty for six months. So that's not a one case, not a two case. Uh, I have those handful cases, especially for young patients. So this is where, um, you know, if we see uh, this medicine, you will see there's more and more patients now believe in, you know, traditional medicine or integrated medicine. So you will see more patients. Uh, so that's where we want to help build the bridge or the gap uh, where the Western medicine knowledge, uh, maybe uh, you have a more hand-on and a clinical experience uh, because over in the hospital, over here in the hospital, you see nothing but Western medicine cases. Oh, oh. Um, okay, Yoon Sun did ask one final question and I think I have messed everybody up. So I'm gonna take ownership. Um, yes, you can apply at any point in your DAOM program for the residency program. So if you start this term, you can apply, well, you can't apply for fall 2022 because that's passed, but you can apply for the January 2023 start. So, um, yes, yeah, so at any point you can apply. I just wanted to, to say there's lots of options. So um, absolutely, if you're if you are interested, um, reach out to Dr. Debbie, Debbie or I, um, you all have our emails and we can get you guys the uh, application forms and all that needs to be done for that. But yes, you can. Start applying today if you would like. Other questions for us? These are great questions. I think. So if you have any other questions, I think we'll call it a night since it is almost eight o'clock. And I know some of our folks are on the East Coast, which makes it almost 11 o'clock. Um, so we appreciate you guys hanging in. Um, I definitely, I appreciate Dr. Mateki and Dr. Osler and Dr. Lowe to hop on and share these, um, share your experiences and, and talk about the program so that um, our students can really understand how, what this program brings to them and what they can walk away with. Uh, Dr. Debbie, do you have anything else you wanna share before you close the meeting? No, we're very honored to have all you guys. You guys are um, excited to join this. So we're looking forward to help you to achieve your goal. And then uh, we thank you, um, Dr. Mtaki, Dr. 
Auxiliary and Dr. Lowe came to talk oh. to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. And Dr. Good Chen, night. Nice. Thank you. Look forward to see many of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if you guys do think of a question, feel free to shoot it over to Dr. Debbie, and she will either get the answer or forward it on to those folks that can answer those questions for us. So as we always like to say, this is not a one and done conversation. Um, right. And if you have questions and they percolate, please, please come to us um, so we can answer them. Otherwise, I think I might see some of you for English defense this Saturday. And I think, Debbie, do you have a class coming up? When's the next time uh, we get to see the class? Uh, the second week of December. But then we have first week of December have uh, capstone defense. Hence That's students right. training. Right. So your right. capstone, my capstone is before Thanksgiving. And you, the Chinese capstone is after Thanksgiving. So yes. it is a stressful time at five branches. <laughs> <laughs> fun right. time, fun time. Fun time, fun time. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you guys very right. much for coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night.